which first of all makes me feel like a fake developer that's because of the primogen so just like the chat dev that i know i will be one day i went on to lead code and tackle a couple of c++ problems myself and is it going okay it's it's going length of the arm of my robots of the arms of my robot god damn that takes in an x and y aka the position of my end effector where i want it to go here and maybe my math is wrong very very possible the it's a life cooking show on the bon appetit test kitchen youtube channel i need that sometimes Hello everyone. So it's been apparently 11 days since I'd give you an update on our two degrees of freedom 3D printed pen plotter robot. Starting to know this like a song, goddamn. And so uh, as you can imagine, things have been going slower than usual, for sure, because of a few reasons. Calling those excuses, for sure. It's that time of the year where tech companies are going out the wazoo with buttloads of work happening. I also on the side have a couple of freelance projects that are pretty interested that I'm for sure going to talk about soon on this YouTube channel. So follow to not miss them. Sweet Jesus. And also re-watching for the 10th time the It's a Life cooking show on the Bon Appetit Test Kitchen YouTube channel. Because I need it, alright? I need it. Brad Leone, if you're watching this, probably not, but uh, yeah. I need that sometimes. Anyways, was still some progress made? Absolutely. And we're going to talk about that today. A couple of interesting stuff for sure. So first of all, we haven't talked about coding for a while. I mean, on, on this particular project. And as you know, I am using an ESP32 that uses Arduino type of shit. And this stuff is based off C++. And I did do some C++ back in college, but the bare minimum of it. And I was realizing as I was going deeper and deeper into this project, asking ChatGPT a couple of questions, helping me out with writing this function here, this function there, that I didn't know too much about this language, which first of all, makes me feel like a fake developer. Developer. That's because of the primogen. The primogen, if you're watching this, I hope, again, one day. But also, apparently, C++ seems to be an amazing tool to have around your software engineering belt. And I also always wanted to learn it. And so, this was also a good opportunity to get started with it. And maybe also an excuse to push a little bit further what I actually need to focus on this project. But still, after two weeks, I realized this free course online on Code Academy. By the way, if you don't know Code Academy, amazing little reference for you if you want to get started into coding. You are not going to be a professional with those three courses, but it gives you a great opportunity to just get going and understand what's going on under the hood. So obviously, if you already know a particular coding language, it's not going to be too difficult to learn a new one, as long as you know how to create a variable, functions here in C++ classes, you're going to be very okay. I still did learn a few new processes and ways of handling data, references, pointers, structs and so on and so forth but uh, yeah as i said this is not going to make me proficient in c++ and understand a little bit more my esp32 code so just like the chat dev that i know i will be one day i went on to lead code and tackled a couple of c++ problems myself i never was a lead code guy to be very honest i always was project oriented like if you want to learn something just set a goal and uh, just try to get going this is literally what we are doing with the robot but i was like you know what let's give it a try seems to be a good trend right now and we'll see what's going on and uh, so far I do be learning, which which feels pretty great. Uh, so yeah, these are the only things I've been touching right now recently, C++. Yes, it's easy level. Yes, I have a few ones that I have not finished. Look at those stats. Mm. That's pathetic. Jesus Christ. But anyways, that's been going and on paper making indirect progress on the robot. Right? But also, we have something else that is kind of new. This is why I've been like pushing the most recently. So it's software related, meaning that you are not going to have a lot of visual feedback of what has been done. But in my previous robot oriented video, we talked about that. The math behind the inverse kinematics that's going to happen to the robot, or at least the updated version, because we did have a version before, but it didn't implement the level. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go into the detail. Go watch that last video. You're going to love it, by the way. And those atrocities that you see on screen right there, <coughs> those are the inverse kinematics I need to implement somehow into my code base. If I didn't start something already, I would have tried to do it in C++. But turns out, if you remember, we already started something in Python. That was a little API to be able to communicate between the PC and the actual robot via serial. And so since we already have that, why not try to implement the inverse kinematics on here? And so there is two parts to it. First of all, the inverse kinematics model, like essentially I want my end defector to go to X and Y, so two entries, and I want that to throw back two angles on my motors. To be more exact, two step counts, because the motors don't understand angle, but they understand the number of steps that need to take. You understood that. So that's the first part. And also I need a way to visualize what I'm doing. Because again, this robot is a big old system with a lot of moving parts. There is the mechanical aspect of it, the electrical part, the embedded system receiving the data, and also the software that is right there that I can have also like a couple of errors. So the goal is to try 
to implement a couple of tests here and there to understand that the data that I'm sending or receiving is not really garbage and I can try to work with it. If you remember, I did a first kind of visual representation of the thing in processing, but that doesn't help us because this is in another coding environment. And so I was trying to find a way to represent what I was working on using Python. So I made a couple of research, what was a good 2D graphics library for Python, somewhat close to processing, and turns out that Pygame should be a good candidate. This is the thing that I read the most about when it came to Reddit and that kind of stuff and what people just overall suggested. And uh, I just, I just got going. So you are obviously craving the question of what do we have so far? That's it. We have a window, we have one line, which is actually two lines because this represents the two uh, joints, essentially. I, I can, I can prove it. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Oh, god dang it. Oh, jeez. Uh, there you go. A woo, woo progress. Anyways, I'm getting going with that. So that's the first part. Like I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how the spy game work, making things move, trying to have a representation of how that's going to work, etc., etc., etc. So that's going slowly but surely. I'm not focusing on that too much because the important part actually is the actual kinematics model. That is this big old file right here, which is just essentially a mathematical representation of what we've been doing on here. And is it going okay? It's, it's gone. So I'm not going to go into the details too much because obviously that would be very boring to go line by line on this. Maybe one day, I don't know. But like for a very brief example, those constants variable right there represent a couple of things on this drawing. So for example, the joint length right there is the actual length of the arm of my robots, of the arms of my robot. God damn. The lever length is the thing that we have right there. Beta is the thing that we presented here, which is the angle that will also be constant. And Jeff is the distance between this joint right there and the end effector. This is J, this is EF, so we got Jeff, all right? And essentially the rest is just vector manipulation and the law of cosines. And does it work? I mean, we can try right now. For example, exactly what we talked about, I have this pause to angles definition right there, functions should I say, that takes in an X and Y, AKA the position of my end effector where I want it to go. And it should throw out the angle of my two motors. Only one right now because I have been slacking a little bit. So on paper, it means that if I have all of my joints connecting to one another, reaching the furthest area, that would need to be two times my joint length and the height of my lever, which is five, meaning that the angle of my motor would be zero, right? And so if we try this out, this throws out exactly zero radians. Is it the case? Close, close. To be honest with you, I don't really know what's going on. I'm pretty sure this has something to do with floating points right there and like uh, something's happening over here and maybe my math is wrong. Very, very possible. But in any case, we, we, do, we do make some progress. Apart from the comedic aspect of all of this and me not understanding what I'm doing, we are making progress somewhat some progress. So yeah, here we go for that stuff. A little bit more insights about my development process of a project that might be too big for just me. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I see more and more people catching up to those. Feels pretty nice to see all of these conversations happening in the comments. Do not hesitate to like, subscribe, share it to a friend, give your opinion because I know you love to do that. And apart from that, I see you all very soon on the internet. Bye-bye everyone.